What's going on guys, it's Hi, and in this video I'm going to show you how to bulk roll your own film. But first let's take a look at all of the equipment that you will need. You will need a pair of scissors, tape, a film changing bag, a bulk roll of film, reusable film canisters, and of course a bulk roller itself. If you're interested in anything that I've shown in this video, there will be links to all of these products in the description below. So before we actually get started with the bulk rolling tutorial, I want to go over all of the equipment and talk about them for a little bit. First, a pair of scissors and tape. This stuff is pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward, and you'll see how they are used in a little bit, so just don't worry about them for now. Next, a film-changing dark bag. If you're unfamiliar with a film dark bag, it essentially allows you to have a completely dark environment for you to interact with the film. Because, of course, undeveloped film is light-sensitive, so you don't want to expose it to all of the light around you. If you develop your own film, you probably already have one of these around, but if you don't, I would highly suggest you to just pick one up because they aren't that expensive and they can be extremely useful when working with film. Alternatively, you can always find a completely dark room, and I stress completely dark room, not just a room that looks dark enough, but a completely dark environment or else you will risk exposing your film to light and damaging it. Next we have the bulk roll of film, and there are a variety of different film stocks that come in these 100 foot bulk rolls that you can choose and roll yourself, but for this demonstration I will be using Kodak T-Max 400. For those who are new to bulk rolling film, there is something to note about the packaging that the bulk roll comes in, and there are a few different variations, but some of them will come in a cardboard box like this, some will come in a metal canister, some will come in a box with a light tight baggie. Some would come with a variation like for example this one comes inside the box a metal canister and inside of this there is a light tight black bag. I want to point this out because if you are using a bulk roll of film and you are unsure of how the packaging is situated like you don't know if this box is light tight by itself or there's something else in here do not open this box until you are in the dark bag because if you were to pop this open and the film is just sitting in there bare bones you risk completely damaging everything and ruining this entire box of film so again unless you are absolutely sure that the film in here is light tight do not open this box until you are in the dark bag. Next, let's talk about the reusable film canisters. These are the two that I personally use. One is completely made out of plastic while the other is made out of metal. And I personally like to use the plastic ones more because I think they're easier to handle and use. But I keep the metal ones around because they are DX coded. And this is sometimes necessary for some cameras that don't have a way of adjusting the film speed or exposure compensation. With these, the plastic ones are generally cheaper. These cost around a dollar each while the metal ones cost around two dollars. The price difference isn't that great and again they are reusable. So just buy whichever one works out better for you. Something else that I've seen other people do is actually reuse these pre-rolled film canisters and to do this instead of prying them open when you get the film out, just unroll the whole thing, snip it, leave a little bit of leader left. That way you can actually attach the leader from this pre-rolled can to your bulk roll of film and that way you can reuse this thing and not have to buy reusable film canisters. Lastly, we have the bulk roller itself and I personally use a Watson 135mm film bulk roller. I actually bought this one on eBay because this product is discontinued and you'll likely not be finding one in stores. But there are a few different manufacturers that still make new film bulk rollers so it's not that hard to find one. For this tutorial, I would be using the Watson 100, but if you are using a different film bulk roller, don't worry about it because most of the information that I am showing will be transferable because most film bulk rollers really function the same way. Now that we have all of that information out of the way, let's bulk roll some film. The first thing that we need to do is to load our film into the bulk roller, but just remember this has to be done in complete darkness. So I obviously can't show you this with the film itself, so I'm going to demonstrate with this roll of tape. Looking on the side of the Watson 100, we see that there is this circular section right here that is inscribed with the words gate is open or close and when you turn it, it coincides with the inscription. Gate is closed when you twist it to the right, gate is open when you turn to the left. This section is actually accessible by turning this twist knob and taking it apart. This is the film chamber and where you load your bulk roll of film into. Notice that there is a little opening in the film chamber right here. This coincides with the gate which is essentially this plastic section right here. When you open and close the gate, the slip becomes accessible to the front compartment of this bulk roller. 
So after disassembling this bulk roller by removing the gate, you can actually start loading your bulk roll of film into the film chamber. And remember for this demonstration, this roll of tape will act as my bulk roll of film. Loading your film into the bulk roller is quite simple. All you have to do is place it into this chamber. The only thing that you really have to be aware of is its orientation. When you load film into the bulk roller, you just want to make sure that the film unravels in this direction rather than this direction. So you always want the shiny side up and pointing out. So all you really have to do is place your bulk roll of film into the film chamber and make sure that there is a liter of film going through the gate and into this front section of the bulk roller. Now all we have to do is reassemble our bulk roller and tighten this screw back down. Now that that's done, we can use this side lever to open up this front compartment of the bulk roller. Remember that whenever you open up this front compartment, you want the gate to be closed. Because if the gate were to be open, that gate, that door right there will be open and it will allow light to pass through into this film chamber and will effectively expose it and you'll have a bunch of unusable film. At this point, we can take one of our reusable film canisters and disassemble it depending on the canister that you are using. And we'll just be working with the take up spool for now. Now I'm going to take some tape and just wrap it around my take up spool. From here we can bring the bulk roller back in and attach the film to the take up spool with the tape. I personally find that attaching the film to the take up spool this way by wrapping the tape completely around and holding the film in place on both sides works the best and this way it is least likely for the two pieces to come apart once you start putting some pressure on it in the camera when it starts to stretch everything out. Now we can just reassemble this film canister and place it in between this knob and the crank. From here we can just close this front door and open the gate back up. At this point it is important to have the gate open because if you were to have the gate closed as you're winding your film into the canister it will rub against that gate and will really scratch up the entire roll of film and then you'll have a lot of damaged film. So just remember to open the gate back up. Another thing to point out here is this twist knob that has indicators from 0 to 40. This essentially is a film counter window and it tells you how many frames you've rolled into your film cartridge. When you're broken rolling your film, you just want the indicator to point at 0. You can turn it and adjust it. but you just really just want it to be at zero. With this particular bulk roller, you want to actually roll four more frames than what you intend to shoot. Say you want to have a roll of 36 exposures, you actually need to roll 40 frames. If you want to have 24 exposures, you roll 28 frames and etc. This is because when you load film into a camera, you typically have to stretch the film over and that four extra frames compensates for this exposed part of film. Now we can actually start to roll the bulk film into our film canister and to do this I like to just hold this Watson 100 like so with my thumb on this knob and my right hand on this crank. You want to put pressure on both of these points because when you don't sometimes the film just falls and really just free floats and when you turn the crank it really doesn't do anything. So just hold these two in place and start to crank. As you can probably hear, there is a clicking noise and this is coming from that film counter window as it moves up and indicates how many frames you've rolled into your film canister. For this particular roll, I wanted 36 frames, so I actually rolled 40 and as you can see, the counter actually goes back to zero. From here, we can close the gate back up and open up the front compartment. Now let's take this roll of film out and we can take a pair of scissors and just detach it. From here the last thing to do is to just cut the film leader into our bulk rolled film and if you don't remember the film leader is this cut out section of film right here. So just take your pair of scissors and make a little curve cut for the film leader. When you're doing this, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just need a little curve, and that's all it really takes. At this point, you are done bulk rolling your film, and you can continue by rolling some more, or you can disassemble everything by taking the bulk roll of film out of your bulk roller. 
but just remember that this has to be done in a completely dark environment or you can always just keep the bulk roll inside of this bulk roller because it is light tight. If you've made it this far in the video, hopefully that means that you were successful in bulk rolling your own film and actually didn't destroy a bunch of it. Now in this part of the video, I want to talk about bulk rolling itself. If you watched this video for the sake of just watching it and not for the tutorial itself, you may have a few different questions about bulk rolling. Now you may be wondering why someone would actually want to go through the hassle of bulk rolling their own film when they can just go out and buy a pre-rolled roll of film. Well the first and probably most popular reason for bulk rolling film is because it saves you a lot of money. Depending on the film that you bulk roll, bulk rolling can actually save you up to half the price of a pre-rolled canister of film. Take for example Ilford HP5. At the time of this video, a single roll of 36 exposures 35mm film of Ilford HP5 cost $5.69, while a bulk roll 100 foot roll cost $69.97. When you buy a bulk roll of film, you can actually roll it out to about 20 rolls of 36 exposures. It's actually more than that, but let's just say 20 just to make the math easy. So $69.97 for a bulk roll of HP5 divided by 20 rolls, which means each roll costs about $3.50, saving you $2.19 per roll, which is about 1.63 times cheaper. And this is considering Ilford HP5, one of the more well-known and highly regarded film stocks. So the price is going to be a little bit higher. If we were to go with one of the lesser brand name films, the price drops way down. And in my personal experience, I've actually got it down to around $2 per roll of film. So in the long run, bulk rolling film can actually save you a lot of money. Of course, this doesn't really matter if you were just a casual film shooter shooting a roll once in a while. A dollar here, a dollar there, it doesn't really matter. But if you are a consistent and a dedicated film shooter, the money will definitely add up fast. Another reason for bulk rolling film is because Bulk rolling allows you to really roll any number of frames into a canister that you want. Say you don't want a roll of 24 or 36 exposures, you want 2, 8, 15 exposures in one roll. You can do that with bulk rolling. This is particularly useful to me when I'm experimenting, whether I'm using a new camera, new chemicals, or a new developing process. I'd rather try it on a few frames rather than blowing an entire roll of 24 or 36 exposures and possibly ruining everything and getting nothing, wasting all of that money. When you just waste a few frames, the cost is, of course, a lot less. But of course, with all of the benefits, there are a few drawbacks with bulk rolling film. If you want a bulk roll film, you're going to be somewhat limited in the film stocks that you can choose because mostly the big name manufacturers produce a bulk roll of film and in the more well-known and more sought after film stocks, you're not going to find a random film stock in a bulk roll form. You are also largely going to be limited to black and white films because there aren't really bulk rolls of color films around minus cinema films. If you're interested in bulk rolling cinema films, this is something that I highly suggest you to look into prior to buying it because this is not something that you're going to get a lab to develop for you. You're going to have to do it yourself and it does require a different process. So learn about it before you dive in. At the end of the day, bulk rolling can provide a lot of benefits to a more dedicated film shooter. If you plan on shooting more than 20 rolls, bulk rolling may be more of benefit to you than just going out and buying individual canisters. The cost may seem high up front, but believe me, it really pays for itself in the long run. If this video has helped you out, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below with any thoughts or questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.